Hello and welcome along to Emirates Old Trafford and this is Lanx TV's first IPL show and I'm delighted to have alongside me Kate Cross and Liam Livingston who hopefully will be jetting off to India fairly soon but Kate let's come to you first. Uh, you've just come back from India actually because you were part of the the Thunder team that went to, to Dubai and then on to Mumbai uh, as part of a pre-season trip. How did you find it? Yeah, it was a great two weeks, actually. We had a week with the lads over in Dubai first, and then we jetted off to Mumbai. A few different experiences for the girls. A lot of them haven't played much cricket outside of England, so to go and play in two different countries within two weeks was was brilliant and a great way for us and the girls to be able to put what they've been practising in the winter into practice. So, um, yeah, it was a really a really great trip and we got a lot out of it. I think you've been to Mumbai before, but a lot of the girls wouldn't have been to India at all. Um, did they did they find it interesting, to say the least? Yeah, I mean it's very different to playing your cricket at the likes of here at Emirates or Trafford. It's um, a lot of adjusting and a lot of um, adapting to the conditions that you've got in front of you. And um, we didn't know what ground we were going to turn up at when we played our fixtures, and um, we were very lucky to be able to train at, at the Mumbai Reliance Ground, which was an incredible facility. And then we went and played our games at Sachin Tendulkar's home ground, which was another great experience. And, you know, you're really in the thick of Mumbai and people walking past on the way to work were stopping to watch the game. And, you know, there was a lot of intrigue around the fact that we were playing over there. Um, so, yeah, it was just, like I said, a great experience for some of the girls. And, and it was kind of experiences that like money can't buy. It's, you know, something that they'll, they'll remember for a long time. And um, I remember my first trip to India was one of the best that, I've had overseas so um, hopefully that was the same for a lot of our girls as well. And you got a hat trick as well didn't you? <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah the um, day after I found out I was moving over the Pennines to play for the Superchargers I thought I'd better put in a bit of a performance but yeah I picked up a hat trick which was nice. And it wasn't all cricket that uh, the girls were, were uh, involved with they were also involved in one or two community visits as well and uh, we've got uh, a video of some of the girls visiting one of the poorer communities. So we started the day um, doing some coaching sessions with, with some kids um, at the Oval and it was lovely to see so much cricket being played. Um, there's about four or five games of cricket on the same field which was amazing. The um, field at uh, mid-off on one pitch was uh, fine leg on the other pitch so um, yeah loads of cricket and um, it was nice to, to see and coach a few of the, few of the, the children as well. Oh, look at this, fantastic! Oh, it was look at Kanti, 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 to the fishing village um, which was a great experience I think um, really puts things into perspective I guess you sort of don't realize that people actually live like that and um, yeah it makes you very grateful for what you've got and yeah puts a lot of things into perspective and a uh, very humbling experience I guess It was really great to, to play a bit of football and a bit of cricket with the kids and um, yeah I've never seen children so happy and it just shows that yeah they've, they've got nothing but the, some of the happiest children I've ever seen so um, yeah it was really nice to see that and a really good experience to, to sort of yeah go and see it and be a part of it. Um, I think we made some, some kids very happy by, by giving them some kit as well so um, all in all it was a great day and a really good experience so um, definitely an experience that will stay with me for the rest of my life. Yeah it's amazing I think yeah you wouldn't get experiences like that anywhere else so um, to be able to come out here to India and do that I um, yeah, feel really privileged and really grateful to be able to do that.
Well, what an interesting experience that turned out to be. And Kate, you weren't a member of the, the, the party that went on, the, on that visit, but you must have been affected by what you saw in Mumbai and the girls were as well. Yeah, the, the three girls that went on it spoke so highly of the event and I've done similar things in the past, obviously wasn't on that particular one, but um, all three of them just said how humbling an experience it was and it, it kind of takes you back to why you love the game of cricket. You see the kids running around just getting the opportunity to play and the smiles on their faces was um, apparent, so apparent. Um, and we played a, a little game at the end of the tour and you know we went through the highlights and lowlights of the tour for just a bit of fun. And every single person that went on that visit had that as their highlight and they said it really stuck with them and that's why you do those things. It's mm. kind of to take you to those moments that you, you're probably never gonna experience particularly here in England. So it, it, yeah, it was a very humbling experience for the girls that went, but then they fed that back to us. And I think that kind of went through the group as well. So it was um, a pretty special day out there. Great stuff. Liam, let's come to you. Now then, I, it's a bit of a surprise to see you on the sofa because I thought you might be on your way to India uh, to, to join your your team, the Punjab Kings. When are you going to get out there, do you think? Yeah, hopefully. Um, I had injections last week, so um, they've worked their magic. So hopefully within the next yeah, 40, 48 hours, I'll be on my way out to India. So, um, yeah, it's been a long time coming, but uh, finally there's, there's light at the end of the tunnel for me. Yeah, that's fantastic because, I mean, when you did the injury out, playing for England in, in Pakistan, it looked completely innocuous. So it must be doubly frustrating. Yeah, it was. I think it was just maybe a little bit of um, an effect of my ankle injury that I did before the World Cup and trying to play the World Cup um, with that. I mean, it was worth it in the end. But um, yeah, I guess that probably had a knock-on effect on, on my knee. So yeah, I've probably had three months of um, three, four days a week downstairs in the gym and Unfortunately, that gets a little bit boring after after a few weeks. So, um, no, I'm looking forward to, to turning up to work, uh, being able to go out and play on a cricket field rather than get in a gym. So, yeah, thankfully, um, yeah, it, it all seems to be heading in the right direction now and looking forward to getting back out there. Great stuff. No doubt you've been in contact and keeping a close eye on what the Punjab uh, Kings have been doing. Um, finished fifth last year but hoping to go better than that this year and have started well. Shikha Dawan's in good form. Yeah, um, it was obviously a bit frustrating last year. We thought we played some pretty decent cricket at times and um, unfortunately just fell away towards the end of the end of the tournament and missed out on qualification. But um, no, I've spoke to Sam Curran, who's out there at the moment. Uh, he's in the same team. So it's always that nice to have, have familiar faces to go out and join. Um, but yeah, Shik has taken over as captain. We've got Trevor Bayliss as our coach, so we've had a, a few big changes. And um, from what I've heard, it's uh, all the lads are really enjoying themselves. From what I've watched, the lads have been playing some good cricket as well. So um, no, I'm excited to, to get out there. I had a really good time last year. I enjoyed playing my cricket for them. So um, going back and playing in an IPL that's traveling around the country as well, and uh, not just stuck in Mumbai, um, that should be good fun. Well, the men's, IPL is well well underway. Women's IPL has just finished. Kate, you were out there commentating on it. What it was the first the first form of, uh, of IPL for, for women. Um, what has that done for women's cricket, not only in India but worldwide? Do you think? Oh, it was massive. Um, we've been crying out for it for a long time now. I think we've seen what the men's tournament has done for franchise cricket around the world and how much it's escalated the value of cricket. Um, you know seven eight years ago you couldn't be a professional female cricketer and now you can earn i think smithy mandana went for three hundred and eighty thousand pound in that in the auction so and nat, nat silver brunt three hundred and twenty thousand yeah it's life-changing money for ten the times what you'd be getting playing a full season here isn't it exactly which just goes to show the magnitude of the tournament and and how valued cricket is in india and how much the bcci have put towards that tournament and invested in it. It's only going to grow and um, they've got five teams at the moment but I'm sure in the next couple of years we'll see that that grow and develop and, and like Liam said that the, the tournament for the women was only in Mumbai so it wasn't able to expand and, and get around the country which I'm sure it will start to do. Um, but I've been a huge fan of the IPL for, for years now and th you know the fact that we've got that opportunity for the women to go and do similar things and it from what I saw it looked like it was treated very similar to how the men you know with the the media and the marketing around it um, and there's some household names now from that Indian women's team that are, are you know really big names in India the likes of Harman Preet Kaur and, and Smithy Mandana 
Um, so yeah, it's, it's great to see and it attracted the calibre of player that you want in the best tournaments. So you've got all the Australian players putting the name in the auction to play, um, which I think speaks volumes about how much the girls wanted that tournament to happen. It's a concentrated tournament this year, wasn't it? Just played on, at two venues and, and mainly in, in Mumbai. But do you see it in, in years to come expanding right the way out through, through the country? I hope so, because that's how you, you build traction, I think, and build the visibility. And obviously we've had COVID for the last couple of years, which has restricted a lot of travel. And that's why the men's tournament is now able to get back up and running. And, and I'm guessing you've got a lot of flights coming up. Um, and it, it is, it's manic. The schedules are absolutely crazy. Um, and there's obviously a game on every single day. So um, I hope that that does happen for the women's tournament as well. Um, it started well, which was the main thing. The crowds were brilliant. I think they averaged about 10,000, 12,000 for most games. Um, so yeah, if we can get that out to the bigger stadiums as well, then then hopefully we can sell big more tickets and, and get more bums on seats and get people excited about women's cricket. Fantastic. Liam, you're obviously excited about going out to, to India. Just tell us what it's like playing in front of such enthusiastic crowds out there. I mean, the cricket fever really takes hold during IPL season, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I think it's not only just in the stadiums as well. I think everywhere you go, even walking through airports and stuff, everybody knows about cricket and IPL cricket. So um, it's a very different experience to what you get in England. Um, but I guess that's probably one of the best parts about it is um, it's probably like footballers over here. Um, everybody knows what's going on. Everybody knows about the cricket um, and everybody loves their cricket. Um, so, yeah, wherever you go, there's people playing in the streets um, and they love their cricket. So, yeah, from what I've seen on TV, the crowds have been immense. I think you look at RCB's um, jersey unveiling and they filled the stadium for that, which is uh, it just goes to show how excited they are to have cricket back uh, in all the different cities, which they obviously haven't had for three years. So it's definitely the best part about the IPL is traveling around, playing in all the different uh, grounds, playing in very different atmospheres. And um, yeah, like I said, I, I love my cricket last year with Punjab and it'll be nice to, to go and play at, at the home ground. And we've got a Lancashire interest, of course, there's yourself and, and Joss Butler and Phil Salt out there. Um, how Joss is obviously one of the king, kings of, of IPL and has been for many years. Phil's having a s slightly different experience, not playing. A little bit like you when you first joined Rajasthan Royals, he didn't play at all. That must be quite hard. Yeah, it is. It's difficult. Um, but it's such a good experience. Uh, the IPL as a whole thing, it's not really all about playing cricket on the field. It's about spending time in dressing rooms. My first Rajasthan squad, I had Jofra, Stokesy, Joss, Steve Smith, who you sort of sit next to on a bus, you sit next to on a plane, and even 10 minutes talking about uh, to Steve Smith about cricket, you can learn so much. Um, so I guess that's the, the side of it that people don't really see. And I, like I've had it for years about, um, we obviously missed the first couple of weeks of, of cricket here in England, but the experience you can gain in an IPL, even though Phil's not playing, he'll be in a changing room. He's, he's spending time with Ricky Ponton, who will obviously be helping him with his batting, um, which that experience, you can't really get anywhere else. So um, yeah, the, the whole IPL experience is, is like no other. And I'm sure, um, yeah, like you said, Joss is obviously one of the big names and has been for years, but Salty will certainly uh, enjoy that experience. And from what he learns over there, he'll then bring Brack into, into the Lancashire dressing room and then sp spread that onto the youngsters. It's, it's invaluable, the, the experience and the learnings that you can get over there. Kate, have you heard from, uh, from Sophie Eccleston since she's been back? I mean, she must have had a fantastic time when she was out there. Yeah, she loved it. I caught up with her when I was over there, actually, and managed to get some food with her. But she, I mean, she's the franchise queen at the minute. She's going around the world dominating absolutely every every place that she goes to play. So um, I think for her, it's the experiences now. You know, the cricket's almost becoming the the kind of, background noise she's that's what she's used to doing but um yeah she said she absolutely loved it she said it was carnage and chaos because it was all so new um but yeah she she's been over and played in the um the t20 challenge which was the kind of precursor to what the wpl has become so she's been over there for the last two or three years playing so um yeah she's she went for a hefty amount of money as well so i think the drinks are on her when she finally gets back to being with the thunder girls great stuff uh, thanks for now uh, we've heard what uh, kate and liam have 
uh, got to say about the IPL, uh, we've got our very own cricket kid who's become a bit of a social media sensation. And he's out in India at the moment. And these are his views of the tournament so far. What's up everybody? I'm Jackson, aka the Cricket Kid, and I'm out here in India, Bangalore, and I'm here doing some training, matches, but most importantly, following the IPL. But I'm here to tell you about some of the predictions I think might happen. Straight in for top run scorer and top wicket taker. For the top run scorer, I reckon David Warner's definitely going to be up there, but it's definitely going to be hard to beat the one and only Joss Butler. And for the wicket takers, I reckon for the spinners, Rashid Khan, a world-class leg spinner. But for the pacers, I reckon Mark Wood, for an absolute rocket, taking people's heads off, he's definitely going to take the most wickets. The most catches and the player of the tournament, I reckon there's someone who could be up for both here, and that is MS Dhoni, world-class wicketkeeper. And if he can lead CSK to a title, then he might also win player of the tournament. But it's going to be very hard, very, very hard to beat King Coley if he can lead RCB to their first ever IPL title. For the ones to watch, I definitely think Harry Brook's going to be up there. It hurts me to say it that because he's a Yorkshireman, but he can definitely show that he's lethal in the T20 format. In terms of the overall winners, I think it's going to be a Rajasthan look now final with RCB and CSK pushing it very, very close. Let us know your predictions at Lanx Cricket and the Cricket Kid. I hope you enjoy the tournament. Well, that's really good stuff from the Cricket Kid there over in India. Let's hope he's having a good time and will continue to do so. Kate, you're a bit of a, uh, an IPL fan full stop. I believe you're a Chennai Super Kings uh, fan as well. Yeah, I am. We went over to India on an England tour in 2018 and I didn't support a team, but I always watched the IPL. So I thought I'm going to buy into a team. Um, Mark Wood had signed and Sam Billings had signed for Chennai. So I thought I'll follow them. And then I've kind of just supported them ever since. And they seem to be a team that either does really well or really not well. Um, and they're coming off the back of a not great season. So hopefully things are a bit better for them this year. Uh, and Liam, it's a fantastic tournament. Ten teams playing. Um, who do you think is, is going to be right in the shake-up at the end? I think the two teams that played in the final last year are still strong. I think that's a thing about the big auction. If you if you have a good big auction, then you're pretty much set for three or four years. You can obviously retain as many players as you want. So um, I think the key to the IPL is them big auctions. Is If you have a good one, you set yourself up for a, for success over the next three or four years. Um, good Jurat are obviously a strong team. They won it last year. Um, and Rajasthan, uh, the other team in the final, are pretty strong. I actually think that we've got a, a decent team this year. Um, we're obviously missing Johnny a little bit. He'd have been he'd have been great for us, but um, we found a, a young lad that's opening the batting for us who was really good last year away from um, away from the games. But it's a very different thing playing IPL cricket for the for the local boys out there. There's a lot of pressure, and um, they obviously grow up watching IPL cricket. So um, yeah, I think we've got a very strong squad. Um, so yeah, hopefully, I think the key is to just qualify. Once you qualify, you, you give yourself half a chance of winning it. Thanks, Liam. Best of luck to you. Hope that knee's uh, fine and uh, you get plenty of match time when you get over to India. Kate, thank you very much as well. That's it from us then. That's the end of our first Lanx TV IPL show. We'll be back later in the tournament with another edition. We'll see you then.